happy girl. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another podcast of Women at the Well Ministries, where we believe that all of us have to come to Jesus like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Our highest priority is making God real in your life. Whether you are listening in our app, in your favorite podcasting app, or on our website at watwm.org, we invite you to sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen your daily walk with Jesus Christ. Living a life for Christ, she's a happy girl. There is a peace that comes from knowing God and allowing Him to rule in our hearts. There is no doubt that we live in a world full of trouble. We are faced daily with problems, some big and some small. But for the child of God, these inevitable facts don't steal our peace. Our hope, joy, and peace are in Jesus Christ and not in our circumstances. We, as believers in Jesus Christ, have hope that is rooted and grounded in our faith in God and His Son, Jesus. Join us in this podcast of Women at the Well Ministries as Kim takes us on a journey through the Scriptures, teaching us that through an active, vibrant, and strong relationship with Jesus, we have peace with God that floods our soul, covers our heart, and stills our mind in all circumstances and in every situation. Today, as we take a walk through the scriptures, we are going to take a look at Colossians 3.15. And it reads like this, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. I love this verse, and I love all of its implications, but I absolutely love its application. In this world, we are faced with problems. Some of them are huge and some of them are small and some of them are problems for me that may not be a problem for you, but we are faced with problems. And this verse says that we need to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. So how is it that we can let the peace of God rule in our hearts, even when our circumstances are not what we desire them to be? It's because we have a hope that is rooted and grounded in our faith in Jesus Christ and God. And it's not about our circumstances. We don't have just happiness. Happiness is environmental. Happiness is circumstances. But joy comes deep from within. And it's because of who God is in us and who we are in him and the presence of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us, that regardless of what's going on around us, we can have joy and we are to have joy. And that's that peace of God that takes control of our emotions and it directs our mind. This, my friend, is how we can have the peace of God rule our hearts. This is how we can be peaceful in the midst of the storm. This is how we can have joy in tribulation because we have a blessed hope and his name is Jesus. So as we look at that verse in Colossians 3.15, it's very important that you really understand that we have at our availability a peace that passes understanding and a joy unspeakable and full of glory. But we're going to have to choose it, and we're going to have to choose to purposely, strategically live a life that allows the peace of God to rule in all situations. None of us have everything the way we want it, but there are many of us who have such joy and such peace. In unthinkable trials and unthinkable circumstances, we can lay our head down on our pillow and sleep peacefully, knowing that joy comes in the morning, that we are held in the wonderful hands of God. It's important that we begin to look at our life from the shepherd's 
point of view. Now, things look different from the shepherd's point of view, and I'm not pretending to tell you that we can see things as God sees them, but he gives us a lot of information and a lot of promises in his word that enables us to know that his perspective is one that gives us hope and prospers us. In fact, in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says that, that he has a plan for us to give us a hope and an expected end. He's thinking good thoughts toward us. That in itself should give you joy. He wants to spend time with you, we're told in Revelations 3.20, because he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you'll open it up, I'll come and I'll sup with you. He wants you to talk to him. He says, call unto me and I will answer you and show the great and mighty things which thou knowest not in Jeremiah 33.3. And perhaps one of the more comforting Invitations he gives us is in Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, where he tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find help in time of trouble. See, Christians have a hope because they understand that we are part of the family of God and that he's supplying our every need and that we can do all things through his strength, that his angels are placed round about us, that we don't even dash our foot up against a stone. We have account after account of his presence changing everything. Elijah and the widow, she was going to prepare her only meal, one left for her and her son. But in obedience, she gave to Elijah first, and then the flour never ran out. The barrel of cruise oil never ran dry. Out of nowhere, he provided. He puts Noah's family in the ark and all of the animals and all those who would not heed his warnings and all those who would not accept his invitation to safety. They perished, but safe in the ark was Noah and his family who heeded the call of God. Now, I don't know about you, perhaps flooding and waters and drowning isn't something that is one of your buttons. It is mine. The thought of drowning as a way of dying to me is horrible. And I think that that's an incredible situation and an account that we read in Genesis where it just rained and it rained and it rained. And Noah builds an ark and he'd never seen rain fall from the sky, but that's what he was told to do and that's what he did. And God provided for him. Now that environment and that storm was real. And the dangers were obvious, but nothing got to Noah because he was safe within Jesus. And my friend, I submit to you today that every single day that we live and all that we do, we can be safe in the arms of Jesus. And when you know God, you have peace. But where there is no God, there is no peace. Unbelievers do not have the hope that we have, and we need to live a life of hope. We need to be the light he tells us to be in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. And we need to let our good works shine so that they glorify our Father, because we need people to want what we have so that they too can come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Friends, we are justified by faith, and we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, we're told in Romans 5, 1. It's Jesus who gives us the peace with God. He's ever living to make intercession for us. He's praying for us. Do you know that Jesus prays for those who are his? There's a reason why we can have peace. It's not because we're brainwashed. It's because we are blood washed. When you are washed in the blood of the lamb, you are part of God's family. And the omnipotent, omniscient, all-loving God who never sleeps or slumbers is watching over you because you're the apple of his eye. Friend, I've heard it all probably when it comes to ridicule or people trying to explain to me that my faith isn't real. My God is a crutch. And I've got this news for you. My God is more than a crutch. He's my support. He's my hiding place. He's my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my defender. He's my deliverer. He's my king. 
He's my Lord. He's my friend. And he's my Savior, just to name a few. But he's real. And he manifests himself every day to me. You see him in his word. You learn of his character. He affirms his presence in your life as he takes care of you. And he provides a way where there isn't a way. We have to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. Don't live below your privileges. Live in the peace that God affords you. Colossians 3.15 again says this, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Nine simple words that require a myriad of complex emotion and thoughts in order to accomplish in your life. Let and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. So how do we do this? What does it even mean? One definition of to rule is to exercise ultimate power or authority over. We need to let his peace have the ultimate power in our life. We don't need to be dreaming up bad situations. We don't need to have saturations. We don't need to be Eeyore. We have overcome the world because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He is working out all things for our good. So we don't have to worry about the trial or the temptation or the issue that's in our life that we seem to not be able to understand. We don't have to understand. We just have to believe. Mark 9, 23 says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So this verse in Colossians 3.15, what it's telling us is we got to submit our emotions to the peace of God. We can't rule with our hearts. We have to let God rule in our heart. And how do you do this? Again, it's rooted and grounded in our faith. And maybe you'd be more apt to understand the peace of God and let it rule in your heart if you understood the results of that action. See, in James 4, 7, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The battle's not yours. It belongs to the Lord. When we submit to God, the devil flees. Submitting to God's peace is submitting to God, and you're guaranteed to send the devil packing. Where the devil is, you're not going to have any peace. You're going to have chaos, hurt, negativity, and destruction, because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The thoughts of doubt and fear that you're feeling, they're not coming from God. Because 1 Corinthians 14, 33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. He tells us that perfect love cast out all fear. See, God is waiting with his arms open wide to keep you and to give you peace and to watch over you and to direct you into the abundant life he promises in John 10, 10, which you've got to submit and believe. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. So keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, if we want that ruling peace that Colossians 3, 15 talks about, we got to have a change of focus. I get it. It's hard to submit to God when you're focused on the things around you. Let's talk about Peter. He's in the boat and he sees something in the water and he's not sure what it is. He thinks it might be the Lord. He's not sure. He walked with him every day, but he couldn't recognize him. But before we give him a bad rap, let's talk about the Times he shows up in our life every day, and we neither recognize him nor do we thank him. But he says, Lord, if that be you, bid me come. Peter comes. And as long as he's looking at the Lord, as long as his focus is on God, as long as he is understanding who God is, and he's not beginning to think in his own mind or rationalize anything that's going on or look at the storm, then Peter's able to continue to do a miraculous thing, which is walk on water. But as soon as he looks left or right of Jesus, as soon as he stops looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of his faith, as soon as he begins to look at the storm and give the storm the prominent place in his heart and in his mind, he begins to sink. 
But just like Peter, if we call out to the Lord, he will save us. We're told that in Psalms 55, 16. Peter says, Lord, save me. Three words. And immediately, the Lord picks him up and carries him to safety. It's hard to concentrate on the goodness of God if you're attentive to the world or the things around us. It's hard to focus on the Lord if you're not holy. It's hard to focus on the Lord if you've got one foot in the world and one foot trying to dabble in religion. Religion will not save you. Only salvation and belief in Jesus Christ will. See, there's 18 inches between salvation and religion. Salvation is a commitment to the heart. It's an action, an activated faith. Religion's a knowledge of something, of understanding. But we've got to stop looking at the world and looking like the world and blending with the world. And we've got to steadfastly stand for the Lord. We've got to wholeheartedly believe in who he is. You've got to train yourself to seek God in every situation and to rely solely upon his word. Because then and only then are you going to be in a place of blessing, a place of peace. Are you going to have the abundant life he promises you? Listen, I have no idea what tomorrow brings for you. I don't know what it holds for me. But I absolutely 100% fully know who holds it for both of us. And he is trustworthy. And he loved you so much that he died for you. Life requires faith, and the world doesn't give it to you, but Jesus does. You got to believe. And all of you who are just dabbling in the world, thinking maybe one day you'll make this commitment. Mark 8, 36 says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? We read account after account in the newspapers and on hear about it on TV and in other media outlets of people who seemingly have everything, all the money you can imagine, but they don't have any peace. See, money doesn't buy peace. You see people who seemingly have no problems whatsoever, but they're dissatisfied. See, but the woman at the well in John chapter 4, she found what satisfies your soul. He gave her a drink of water that she would never thirst again. In every human being, there's a place in their body, a place in their heart, a place in their being that only Jesus can satisfy. The devil will lie, and he walks about like a roaring lion seeking to devour you. But Jesus says in 1 Peter 5, to cast your care upon him, for he careth for you. Let the peace of God Rule in your heart. Get in his word. Learn of his character. Find his promises to you. Fall in love with the Lord, who's written you the greatest love letter from Genesis to Revelations. Allow him to distribute his peace over you, through you, and around you. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Remember, you are loved. Jesus loves you. Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. You can visit the show notes for quotes from today's podcast and scripture references. We pray today has been a blessing and we encourage you to reach out to us through our app, our website, or our Facebook page. You can find our app by searching for Woman at the Well Ministries in your app store or through our website at watwm.org. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash watwm. If you visit our website, you'll be able to subscribe to Bible Bits, a daily devotion written by Kim and delivered Monday through Friday by text message. Woman of the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father, and it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. To learn how to partner with Woman at the Well Ministries, please visit our website. Thank you to the Gospel Group Fudge Creek for letting us use their hit song, Happy Girl. We greatly appreciate your prayers. We are praying daily for our listeners. Remember that God loves you. You are loved.
Happy girl.